Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we welcome you to Daily Fresh Manna. Today is Monday, January the 15th, 2024. We are continuing with our theme for January, Conquering Our Thought Life. Praise God. The message today is a question that we have to think about sometimes in what we say and do. So the name of the message today is, Are We True or False Children of the Most High God? Do we belong to the Lord God Almighty? If so, then we should be producing some juicy fruit. The fruit we produce should carry the DNA of the newborn again righteousness of Christ in us that is created by the Holy Spirit. Born again children of God, this lets the world know who your father really is. We must check our character, our actions, our words, our deeds, our thinking, and our walking. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he, Proverbs 23, 7. Is the Holy Spirit in control? Have we trained our ear to his voice? Or are we following the dictates of the flesh? The Bible says that in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. We find that in Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, it reads, But realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, rivalers, uh, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious, gossips, without self-control, without self-control, brutal, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, all they, they have denied is power. Avoid such men as these. That is Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5. Are we true or false children of the Lord God Almighty? Having a form of godliness, that's what really sticks out to me in this Second Timothy uh, verse 1 through 5, especially the fifth, the fifth verse, having a form of godliness, either a mere external show of religion, pretending great piety and holiness, being outwardly righteous before men, having the mask and visor of godliness or else a plan of doctrine, a form of sound words, schemes of truth, which men may have it on paper <laughs> and sign their name to it and made vows to it, but without partaking of the grace of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The scriptures of truth, not living, not living on the inside, the word of God is not in them are not alive in them at all, and they actually are walking as zombies in the earth. But denying the power thereof, though in words they profess their religion and godliness, the fear of God, the pure worship of him, they go to church every Sunday, so they say, but what does it do? Yet in works they deny and in, in, in actually what they do, they deny all. And though they may have a set of notions in their heads, yet they feel nothing of the power of them on their hearts. They are strangers and exper, ex, uh, experimental religion and powerful godliness, or though they profess the scriptures to be the word of God, Yet they deny, they deny the use, the power of efficiency of them. They deny the use of them to the clergy, 
They deny the use of it to their families. They affirm that they are not a sufficient rule of faith and practice. Without their unwritten traditions, they might have the robe on, they might have the talk, and they might have the walk as they appear to be. But on the inside, they are not walking. They have not allowed themselves to be subject to the power of the Holy Spirit that comes from the living and the true God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then it says, from such turn away, have no fellowship with them, depart from their communion, withdraw from them, and come out from amongst them. Oh, my, 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 brothers and sisters, we don't want that to be us. We must not deny the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us. Some are unforgiving, and they are still holding on to pain that they're experiencing years ago, from childhood, from teenage years, from young adults, from adult life, mid-age life, senior life, a week ago, a month ago. Yesterday, I urge you to let it go. Be transformed. Be transformed and let it go. We must let unforgiveness go. Unforgiveness becomes a burden that you carry on your back, and it will make you sick. It will stunt your growth in God. It will leave you with unanswered prayers. We must all ask God to show us any stumbling blocks, anything that gets in our way that keep us from walking in the purpose and the power that God has given unto us, whereby he has called us each individually is a calling on our life, and we must walk as children of light. We must pray, God, deliver and heal us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us not be slanderous, as it said, making false words damaging someone else's reputation. If you don't know what's going on, don't say anything. And don't begin not to say anything that is negative. Stay away from negative talk. Without self-control, no discipline of your flesh, no control of your flesh, you say and do whatever you want to do. You take no thought to other people's feelings or concern. You exhibit outrage and anger. You are easily provoked, just brutally attacking anyone in your past. Those around you must walk around as if you are thin-skinned, like walking on eggshells. This ought not to be. Not lovers of good. You're lovers of confusion and negativity, treacherous. They said treacherous, looking to do harm instead of helping somebody. Rash, no style, no taste, not seasoned with salt. You are abrupt. Conceited, it said, thinking pridefully, thinking pridefully. You learned already and you don't want to learn anything else, you know everything, can nobody teach you anything. Concede it. Jealous. Jealous of other things and wants that other people have, upset that they have more than you have. You say, oh, I've been in the vineyard just as long as they have, but they got a lot more than me. I want what they have. That is sickening. That is jealousy. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You know, it's not about uh, going to church and fellowshipping with the Lord to have a greater relationship with him and being in your prayer life and your devotions and, you know, staying in tune with God. No, it's about doing some of those things so that you can get the pleasures and the benefits of it. So you seek the uh, ministers and, that are telling you about prospering, and it's not about that. It's about the relationship with God. He said, if you delight yourself in me, I will give you all the desires of your heart. The point is God has to be first. He has to be first. But these people that he's talking about, having a form of godliness and denying the power 
uh, thereof, have no, he said, have nothing to do with those people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sin and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, sort of like uh, uh, sheep and uh, wolves in sheep's clothing, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Oh, you've been in school 20 years and you're still practicing the same habits and things that you had before. You know, the word is not getting in. The word is not being effective to your spirit. They deny the power thereof to be transformed into his likeness. He said, but be ye transformed, the Bible says, in your mind so that you will be able to prove what the will of God is. Are we children of the Most High God or not? Godliness is the inside, not the outward appearance. Godliness is what is in your heart and comes from our mouth and our actions and our thoughts and our words and our deeds. In 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, it says, on the other hand, discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness, for bodily discipline. That means physical discipline. It says, for bodily uh, discipline, he says, only does little profit. He's talking about physical uh, exercise, and that type of discipline is of little profit. It says on verse 8, but godliness is profitable for all things when you discipline your spirit to obey the voice of God. Since it holds the promise for the present life and also for the life to come, God's children produce the fruit of his spirit. You see, Galatians 5, 22 to 23 states, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is righteousness of God, Christ in us, Christ in us, Christ in us. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. There's no accusation, glory to God, when you are producing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The opposite of good fruit, the opposite of juicy fruit, if you look at love, the opposite is hatred. If you look at joy, the opposite is misery and despair. If you look at peace, you see the opposite is conflict and irritation. The opposite of patience is impatience, restlessness, agitation, and frustration. The opposite of kindness is heartless, cruelty, meanness. The opposite of goodness is wickedness, evil doing, evilness, and sinfulness. The opposite of self-control is loss of control, undisciplined, bad behavior, unruly, disorderly. Not in control of your thoughts, your words, your actions, or your deeds. But you know what, my brothers and sisters? This day, we declare and decree we are children of the Most High God. We were predestinated to be conformed into his image as it is written in Romans 8, verses 28 to 30. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he, Christ, becomes the firstborn among many brothers. And these whom he predestinated, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. 
It's not easy. It's not easy, but we overcome through the blood of Jesus Christ. We continue to work toward the goal of the high mark in Christ Jesus. We want to work toward that goal. Glory to God. We are God's children. It's not easy, but we do overcome through the blood of Christ and because the new creation lives within us. Glory to God. Do we know in uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 18 through 20, there's a conflict of two natures. For I says, it says in verse 18, for I know that no, no good dwells in me that is in my flesh for the willing is i'm willing is present in me i I will i want to do it but the doing of good is not for the good that i want i do not but i practice the very evil that i do not want but if i am doing the very thing i do not want i am no longer the one doing it but sin which is dwells in me now that's at uh chapter uh 7 but let's see what his next verse says that's the end of chapter 7 paul is speaking but then this conversation continues on into verse 8 Okay, starting, I mean, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse number 2. Christ gives us victory over the flesh. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did it in sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the mind that is set on the flesh is death, but the mind that is set on the spirit is life and peace, because the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, my brothers and sisters, you are not, verse 9, however, you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So then, my brothers and sisters, we are under obligation not to the flesh, but to live according to the, we are not uh, to live according to the flesh, but we are to live according to the spirit. If you are living, 13, according to the flesh, you must die. That means got to let it go. Let it go. If you are living in verse 13, according to the flesh, you must die. But in the spirit of the living God, you are putting to death the deeds of the body you will live. For all who are being led by the spirit, of the living God, these are the sons and the daughters of God. Hallelujah. We know. Hallelujah. We are God's children. We have been called. We have been predestinated and called into living in Christ. His image dwells in us. We were predestinated to be conformed to that image. So therefore, we must hold on. We must be able to say, yes, I am a child of God. Every day, every moment, we got to 
listen for the Holy Spirit and respond accordingly to him and not to our flesh. I know a lot of times we want to, but that is not what God wants us to do. He wants us to live according and walk in the Holy Spirit that is within us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, this world is a confusing place. Lord, we thank you that you are the very definition of everything that is good. And yet, Lord, we confess that we find it difficult to discern between right and wrong, good and evil. But activate, Heavenly Father, our senses, Lord, so that we might know what is of you. Lord, we declare that we have the maturity of faith to make the right decisions in our life. We declare that the wisdom from above is inside our heart, guiding us every minute of the day. We declare that nothing is too big for you, Father, and nothing is too small. Therefore, we dedicate every single decision, every single word, and every single action, O Lord God, to you. O Lord God, we seek to discern what is from you, Father. Guide, O Lord God, our meditations and study of your word so that we might see with our eyes of faith and look with maturity at our lives. For your glory, Father, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, amen and amen. May God bless you, keep you, and heaven smile upon you. And I want you to know, yes, we are true children of Lord God Almighty. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God, and we will press on for the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. And yes, we shall conquer our thought life in 2024. God bless you, love you, and talk with you tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.